Hmm, my favorite trick. The one that stands out the most that popped into my head immediately that I probably is the one that I'm the most proud of was teaching Jaden to sneeze on command. Oh, that, yes. That. And it took a long time. Mm-hmm. So uh, in terms of methodology, there's a couple of different methods that you can use to teach tricks. And one of them is capturing. Mm-hmm. Capturing is basically taking, being opportunistic when right. things happen in a natural mm-hmm. fashion. So anytime Jaden would sneeze, I would mark yes and then reward it somehow. If I, if I had food on me, it would be food because mm-hmm. that's the easiest. And, right. and that's usually the, it's usually the thing that gets your dog's attention mm-hmm. the most. So they go, oh, Oh, why did I get that cookie? Especially right. like when, when we have thinking, learning yes. dogs that know how right. to offer behaviors mm-hmm. and know how to capitalize mm-hmm. on reinforcement, mm-hmm. um, they will start to think and pattern through those behaviors. Okay, what got me that cookie? What it, what can I do again to get another cookie? Mm-hmm. So eventually what happens with capturing, once you've rewarded it well enough, and I got off track a little bit there. I said, if I had food on me, I would reward with food because it's easiest. But if I didn't have food on me and it happened naturally, I would make sure to reward with something else. So I would still take that opportunity to Mm -hmm. mark yes, to pinpoint Mm -hmm. that event with my marker, yes. Mm -hmm. And yes, being specifically an event marker that says, this is what's earned you the cookie. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful for the dog, Right. right? So he would sneeze, I would say yes, and he'd be he'd look at me. And then if I didn't have food on me, I would play with him or I'd give mm-hmm. him, you know, a good body rub yeah. or whatever the case may be. You know, he had all sorts of, of rewards that were not mm-hmm. food that he, I knew he enjoyed. So I could use those to continue to drive mm-hmm. behaviors. And over a matter of time, and I can't remember, I wish I had uh, a better memory about how long it took me to capture that. Um, I do know that he did it through the majority right, yeah. of his life. Well, so it must a, have been young cool. in yeah. his life that yeah. I was able to get that on cue. But basically once he knew offering this mm-hmm. sneeze would get him a reward, mm-hmm. he would start to just like blow nose, blow air out through his, his nose. nose. Yeah. And it wasn't really a sneeze, but he, it, he it was, was trying. close enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was close enough that I could say, hey, look, my dog can sneeze on cue. Right. So I would say a chew to him and he would go <laughs> back at me <laughs> and it would look like a sneeze enough right. that, yeah. you know, yes. he would get the reward. Yeah. So I eventually put that on cue. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was in scenarios where I knew that chances are he's going to offer this, mm-hmm. I would proceed it with the a chew cue. Right. And let's talk about cues for a second, because I think this is a, this is a place where people often get confused with dog training and they end up throwing words at their dogs and expecting the dogs to somehow understand that. Right. So let's talk about cues. When do you add a cue? I don't add a cue until the dog is doing the behavior. Perfect. Yes. Name it once they know it. Right. So if you think about what we're doing here, we're creating associations. Mm-hmm. So If you're learning a different language, say you're learning, you know, I'm going to say, say you're learning English because I don't speak any other language as well. And I'll just embarrass myself trying to make this point. (laughs) So if I show you a cue card with a picture of an apple and I say apple, that's going to create an association. Mm -hmm. If on the other hand, I simply start saying apple, 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 but I don't give you any indication of what apple is and you don't know what that word means, there's going to be some confusion right. there for you. You're going to be like, what? Why do you keep saying this thing? Right. And eventually you'll just tune out the person exactly. because like, I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Eventually you say, you know, that there's no significance with this word right. apple that you keep saying. So I'm just going to forget it. I'm going to tune it out. I'm going to, it's not important. It's right. not important for my safety, my existence, mm-hmm. whatever. It's not going to earn me reward because it's just this word that keeps getting thrown out. So right. you're actually making your job harder mm-hmm. by adding that cue before the the dog understands the behavior. Right. So think about the behavior as the cue card, the picture of the apple on the cue card that makes the word apple make sense. Mm-hmm. The dog's sneezing in this case is the apple. And now I'm going to associate a word with it, right? So the sneeze, I say a chew, either as it's just happening and capturing or just before, if I possibly mm-hmm. can, you know, if I'm good enough to predict that this sneeze is coming, I can throw out that word a chew then get the sneeze Mm -hmm. and then reward it. And I'm creating an association. So now I'm basically showing my dog the cue card because they know the behavior already and then associating the word with it. And now he can, uh, he can understand Mm -hmm. that's an apple. Right. Great. That's a sneeze. That's what I do when I, when we say it to you. And dogs aren't used to learning by language. No, they're not. That's excellent point. For humans, it's natural for us to use language. Dogs, in the dog world, we'll never, ever, ever use language to learn something. Yeah. It's all body cues and signals. Yeah. So it's very foreign 
for our dogs to actually learn our words. It's actually it shows what marvelous creatures they are. Yes. They truly are amazing. Yes. They're so gifted mm-hmm. and they're so intelligent right. and they're so adaptable. Yes. And People often say my dog knows signals and I think, well, that's not that big a deal. Signals are far easier yes, for are. a dog to learn yeah. than a verbal. Yeah. I'm more impressed by a dog that can go just on a verbal with no, no other signal or body language. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Definitely. And if you use good timing when you're adding the command or the cue into your trick, you will be able to isolate the verbal only or the signal only, and you'll be able to have the best of both worlds. Right. Like, for example, with Jaden, way back when, I actually taught him to bark on just a hand signal mm-hmm. so yep. that when he would go, so uh, it, he did a couple of um movie shoots or whatever, movie shoots, photo shoots. He was on a Super Chew package for Purina. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, super way back chews. when. Way back when, <laughs> when we used to do this stuff. Right, yeah. And I would want him to be able to be on set with me outside right, of yeah. the range of the camera, mm-hmm. and I'd want to be able to cue him to bark. Right. So I would actually just make a yapping noise with my finger, mm-hmm. yapping gesture with right, my fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shannon's do, if, if, you're, if you want to see this, go to YouTube, because you can watch us on YouTube and see Shannon's yapping fingers. Now I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, yapping fingers. So <laughs> <laughs> the good timing piece is, you know, what's the good timing piece? I'm still thinking about the yapping fingers. The yapping fingers. So yes, you, you've sorry, got me off. You've good, got me completely off yeah. uh, off kilter now. <laughs> using good timing. So basically, good, if, if separating. I, yeah, yeah exactly. separating yeah. the word, the verbal, from mm-hmm. the signal by a split second. Yeah. So they hear it, then see it. Hear it, then see it. Exactly. Yes. So for example, I would want to say spin, then do my little gesture, then yes and reward, rather than saying spin as I gesture at the same time. Right. Because then my dog is probably going to have all of these stacked cues in there and he's going to need to see the signal and hear the cue because that's how he learned to do it Mm -hmm. and if you take away one of those components he might throw up some confusion there so ideally I want my dog eventually to do it on one or the other I don't Mm want to have to use both Um, it's not the end of the world if I have to use both certainly but it's good Mm -hmm. training to be able to isolate it onto just the verbal command 